Thank you so much. I would like to begin by saying thank you to all the people who selected me to be a recipient of the Nutrier Alumni Achievement Award. It's very special to be recognized for one's achievements in this way, and I am so thrilled and very humbled to be here among such an esteemed group. Now, we were asked to talk for no more than five minutes about our experience at Nutrier, so what I did to try to help myself was I went back to the yearbooks that I managed to hang on to throughout the decades of moving back and forth from coast to coast. And I began to look through these yearbooks, and I must say, I had a lot of fun going back to those old times, seeing all the old black and white photos, and a wave of nostalgia set in. I was particularly caught up in the entries that my fellow classmates wrote to me as summer was about to begin. Of course, many of these entries served as a reflection of how I was looked upon by my peers, and it gave me some insight about the kind of student that I was at Nutrier. So if I may, I would like to read some of these entries to give you a glimpse <laughs> into my social and academic life at Nutrier. <clears throat> Chris, if you pass biology, it will be a miracle. Try and stay out of trouble this summer. Love, Bruce. <laughs> Dear Chris, if we are in the same Spanish class next year, you're the first person I'll rely on to cheat with. <laughs> Somehow, you will manage to get the test ahead of time. Good luck. Love, Dean. I think that was the same Dean that went on to be class treasurer the following year. Yeah, he was handling the money. <clears throat> And here's one from my physical education teacher. Dear Chris, I hope your apathy for shoes and socks don't continue for a lifetime unless you meet a mate who feels the same way. Put some effort forward to make a good junior and senior year for yourself. Best wishes, Susan Lund. <laughs> Are you getting the picture? I was not a good student. I did not get good grades. I often skipped class and borrowed other people's homework to get through. <laughs> but looking back on it all, I realize that it was the music that saved me. We were so fortunate to live in a community that where financial resources and wherewithal gave students full access to music and the arts. Nutrier provided a safe and nurturing environment where I could discover my passions. I had remarkable teachers like Ted Klinka and Dennis Maureen, Virginia Parker and Sam Mages who believed in me. I played the violin and I sang in the choir and later on acted and sang in the student musicals and it was in this rich environment of music and the arts that I felt unencumbered. My freshman year at Nutrier, I played violin in a production of Finian's Rainbow. Mr. Mages was conducting the rather large orchestra. I was first chair, second violin, and I turned the pages of music for my friend and fellow player, Marilyn Barrett. I wasn't an inspired violin player, but in retrospect, I understand how helpful the violin was in charting my future as a singer, as it was a useful instrument in finding correct pitch and provided great training in my ability to read music. But there was a moment in that orchestra pit that I believe was an awakening of my passion for performing. Because I was in the pit, I didn't have the advantage of taking in the entire stage. However, I could see very closely the performers when they came to the edge of the footlights. I was particularly taken with Betsy Miller's portrayal of Sharon McGlonagan, the young ingenue who travels with her father to bury the treasure at Fort Knox before the leprechaun gets it, you know, or something like that. It, you, you know, romance ensues, and by the end of the evening, it's happily ever after for all involved. Now, because I was so entranced by what was happening on stage, it made it very difficult for me to concentrate on my job playing the violin, as I was always looking to get a glimpse of the performers up above. Then it happened, that crystal clear, defining moment that would have me set my foot at the entrance of my life's journey as a performer. I was so completely absorbed by what was happening on stage, I played the violin during a non-musical moment. <laughs> and it was not a pretty sound. Beneath the glare of a quite unsettled Mr. Mages, I realized then and there 
I didn't want to be in the orchestra pit playing the violin. I wanted to be up on stage doing what Betsy Miller was doing. So I want to say thank you. Thank you, Nutrier, for giving me those precious beginnings that helped shape my future as an entertainer and for giving me the support and the very necessary playground where my God-given talents could take flight. Thank you so much for this honor.